we have seven. So. Good morning and welcome to November and the November 1st meeting of the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. Um, I will quickly run through our committee members and then if, Jeff, if you would um, take on staff and visitors, that'd be great. Uh, Ed Kunkel, representing the city of Lacey. I see Ed's here. Um, is uh, Commissioner Mejia with us today? No. How about Joe Downey from the Port of Olympia? No. Lisa Parshley from the City of Olympia. And Joan Cathy from the City of Tumwater. I'm here. Thank you, Joan. Uh, Joseph Richardson from the City of Yelm. I don't see Joseph this morning. Elaine from the City of Tenino, Elaine Clam. Yes. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning. And Kirsten Presley from the town of Bukota. She may still be recovering from Bukota's festivities. <laughs> yeah, they have a lot. <laughs> yeah, they have a lot going on in that little town this time of year. Richard Moon. There's Richard. And Greg Schoenbuckler. Present. Nice to see you, Greg. Yeah, yeah. And Chad Sutter is Present. online. There you are. Yeah, great, Chad. Uh, David Nightingale. Here. Oh, hi. Hello. How did I miss you walking in? in. <laughs> you did. Nice to see you in person. Uh, Laura Busby from Ecology. I do not see Laura today. And Jeff, I will pass it over to you. Certainly. Um, first off, I think in the room you have Amanda Romero. First of our Hello. staff. Also in the room, um, Shanna Case will be talking Hello. to us shortly. And Angela Silstein is also in there. Um, and I'll kind of, there's one other person in the room, I'm gonna get back to that though. We have uh, Karen Weiss. Um, I'm also looking down the list here, Danielle Winsky is on. And Rob Pudner, where's Rob? Oh, there he is. Okay, um, that's it for staff, except for, I want to just uh, announce we have a, a new employee who's in the room with you there, Laura Glover. Um, she began just a, a week ago. She's our new solid waste planner. Uh, she is filling the position that Amanda used to be in, and you'll be seeing her regularly here at these meetings. So anyway, so just as a quick aside, we have... Uh, Laura, could you give us a little, tell us a little bit about yourself so everybody can, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I got to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, I am originally from California, lived in Utah, and now I live here. Um, I got my degree in ecology with a little emphasis in mathematics, so I'll be running most of the data reports. And I'm excited to be here, meet everybody, and look forward to running these meetings in the future. Right. Well, anyway, so, and then as you far as big there. shoes to fill, <laughs> really big shoes to fill. I know it. <laughs> and other guests, we have Aaron Robertson. <laughs> we'll be talking about further later in this meeting. Um, David, I'm not sure I get uh, what his last name. We can just go with uh, David. I'm actually a friend of uh, Laura Pappas here. So Getting to in a moment, and I'm zooming in from San Francisco, and now I will shut up. Oh. And then I see a Ron Jones from Olympia, and Gary Franks, also from Olympia, um, Laura Pappas, and Rep. Just here as a as a citizen, I presume. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nick Harbert. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Nick Harbert with WM. And Tracy Bills from HDR. Good morning. I uh, think that I miss anybody. Okay. Guess I got them. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, we need to adopt an agenda for today's meeting. Have you all had a chance to take a look at that? May I chip in it briefly? 
This oh. should have been 2024, and I apologize. Oh, that. life will go on. Uh, item C should have been 2024 SWAC working plan. So if we make that adjustment on our agenda, do we have a motion to approve it? I, I do have one other thing. I oh, another one. And Sorry. then I think Richard's ready to roll. So. Uh, item A, agenda item 7A, the waste energy presentation. Uh, the presenter, um, David Payne from the city of Spokane, let us know about a day or so ago that he was going to be unable to make it today. Oh. Um, so that, I just want to make sure that that is actually off the agenda. We're going to reschedule him for a, a, an upcoming, he had a family emergency that he had to pull out. So. Okay. So we have two amendments to the agenda. The first is item A is being postponed to another meeting date. And item C should read 2024 SWAC work planning. Does that sound about right? And 2023 SWAC work planning? It's going to be 2024. On both, both dates? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. I move to accept the Thank you, Elaine. We have a motion to approve the agenda with a second from Richard. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Now we will take a look at our meeting minutes for our October meeting. And I would entertain a motion to approve. I so move. Thank you, David. And do we have a second? Yes, second. Uh, second from Elaine. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of approving the minutes from our October meeting, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, we have adopted the uh, minutes from our October 4th meeting. I don't believe we have any public comments uh, this month. Is that correct? We haven't received any, and I don't know, unless someone is, here would like to give comments. Is there someone online who would like to give public comment? I'm not seeing any hands raised. So I think we are good to move on to old business, but really new business. And let's start uh, with item B on our agenda, which is uh, our solid waste budget presentation from Shanna Case. Or is it from Karen? I'm not sure which. It is It is definitely from Shanna. Um, I'll okay. just take a minute. If it's okay, I'll introduce Shanna to you all. So for those of you who might not know me, I am Karen Weaves. I'm the Public Works Assistant Director um, here and for a while. Um, there are lots of new faces on there, but I have also served as an interim solid waste <laughs> manager on a couple different occasions. Um, I am here to introduce Shanna Case. She is one of our accounting assistant fours in our financial group, and she has uh, been with the county now about a year, a little over a year, and has come on um, as our solid waste accountant and just done a fantastic job. So she is here to do the financial presentation today. I am here to provide color commentary as, <laughs> as I see fit. How's that? <laughs> so with that, I'll toss the ball to Shanna. Thank you, Karen. So good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to jump right in to our solid waste presentation for um, the financial portion for here at Thurston County. So we overall have three funds in our. I'm sorry. Can you turn on our camera? Sometimes it, I. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes this room turns the camera. That's okay. I'm sorry. Can we see it? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Right. So I'm going to jump right in. This is going to be a high overview of the three funds we have. So we have our maintenance and operations, our MO fund. And then we also have our post-closure fund. This is a reserve strictly to cover um, expenditures for that post-closure landfill. And then we have our cop capital project um, funds, and we manage all three of those. So this spreadsheet is going to show an overall picture of the balances of those three funds combined. Um, the actual revenue is slowly increasing. It's steady, but it's a very slow increase. And we are seeing a significant amount of planned expenditures in 23 to 25, and that is due to our capital projects. 
I'm, I'm sure most of you know that we are in progress with several of them and we are in the planning stages of others. So um, this is gonna include the wrapping up of our Scadia employer. Um, we also have our pumps that is in the progress to finish in 2024. Um, we have discussion on our South County transfer station and our work reconfiguration. And then again, we're working on that compactor replacement as well. So you'll see a better breakdown of, of how these revenue and expenses in further slides. And then we can address any questions as well. Any questions on this slide for us before we move on? Any questions for Shanna? My color commentary on this will be pay attention to that ending fund balance as we talk about our capital prog uh, program and as we talk about some of our planned future expenditures, you can see we've built up a pretty significant fund balance. But as we look at programming those in, even with those preliminary estimates, you can see our fund balance is definitely decreasing rapidly um, for that infrastructure. Okay, so this is a good breakdown of our revenue. Um, what we've done is put in our actuals for 2021 and 22, our current budget of 23, and then our proposed budget of 24 and 25. Um, as you can see, we are just shy under that 30 million mark. We're hopeful to get there by 2025. Um, below is gonna be a breakdown of where our revenue comes from. So as you can see, our work tipping fees make up 91 to 92% of that, that revenue that's coming in. Um, four to 5% is our yard waste, and we are showing a projected decline in that um, under the new contract. And then three to 4% is our drop box locations for Rainier and Rochester. You'll see a big difference here in the grants as opposed to previous years. So we did a direct appropriation for our public health portion. And so with that being said, for our 24 and 25 budget, we actually get to see the full SWIFA revenue for the grant for all of um, Thurston County. So that's going to include our portion here at Public Works and their portion there at Public Health. So that's why you'll see the big increase in the grant revenue. And just as a little side note, our last rate increase was in 2012. We are going to be doing a rate study plan for the 24-25 to determine if there's going to be anything to adjust from there. We are seeing a little bit of a decline in our Dropbox locations as well. Um, that is going to be a big contribution from COVID, post-COVID, people are back to work and our construction debris is down. So um, housing market, things like that, you know, you saw the big increase during COVID, everybody was home doing home projects. Um, so now we're kind of getting back to that norm of everybody's got to go back to work. <laughs> so that's going to be a big reason for our Dropbox locations for the reduction in revenue there. Any questions about revenue for Shanna before we move on? And, and I have one quick one. You said there's going to be um, a, a rate study for 24, 25. What goes into that study? And I'm, I'm kind of curious about that because revenues still are pretty strong. I'll let, go ahead and let Karen answer that. Okay. So we question. actually started on a rate study with uh, HDR. We started it in 2022, I believe. Um, but we put a pause on it because we thought it wasn't a good idea to do a rate study when we didn't have our new contract in place with yeah. the new revised structure. So we, as we look at that rate structure, it will really be, is the are the rates um, adequate to cover our planned maintenance and operations expenses, especially taking into factors, the, the growth factors that we anticipate for the county? Um, are they going to be adequate to be able to put enough aside for future infrastructure, repairs, replacements, those kinds of things? Um, I can tell you right now, for example, and I think we've mentioned this before, our yard waste, we are uh, significantly subsidizing our yard waste rates right now with our tipping fees. That's a conscious choice and we may continue that, but the gap's pretty significant right now. I think our revenue is less than half of what our actual yard waste processing expenditures are. You can kind of note that right now, we're at about 1.4 
million in terms of yard waste revenue. And so later on, you'll see what those expenditures are. So they will take into factor all of those components to make sure that the rates are appropriately um, set for us for that future growth, um, maintenance and operations and infrastructure needs. Is that how often do you look at that? <laughs> is it is it every year? Is it every it, it should years? it should be on a more regular basis. I think a typical uh, time frame for rate uh, review is about three to five years, and so we will be certainly uh, putting it on more of a, a regular schedule like that. Okay. Oh, and it looks like Richard has a question as well. I was just interested in in contingencies, um, particularly for things like severe weather damage and things like that. Do we have contingencies for that uh, in the plan at all? And do they change at all over time? Or is it just a straight, uh, if it exists, a straight percentage of, of uh, revenue set aside or for uh, budget planning? Well, we, we do two different set asides right now of revenue. We do a dollar per ton for um, sort of some of our cyclical um, reports such as the rate study, our solid waste management plan update, we put a dollar per ton received into our reserve fund for that. We also put $5 a ton uh, right now into our reserve for capital improvements. Um, you talked about emergency type things. We do have a couple programs in our reserve that are truly for uh, emergency type response things. Um, if something were to fail that we need to replace, we have, I think it's a $100,000 line item there that we would be able to react and address that. So it is theoretically built into that rate and we set that aside um, as a contingency plan. Thank you. And I think we're ready to move on. So this slide is what is going to break down that biggest portion of revenue that we see from the tipping fees at the work. <laughs> so consistently in previous years and currently, our commercial haulers bring in about 63 to 64% of that revenue. And then our sub haul is that other 36 to 37%. So this is going to take a better breakdown of our expenditures overall um, by program or basically project area. So our county operations here, that's going to include our toll house operations and Hazel House. Um, our contracted operations are a majority of our expenditures. Um, previous years, that has been roughly right around 70%. Um, due to the increase in budget and capital projects, it does kind of skew this percentage here. Um, it is truly a good still 70% of our MNO portion of the budget. And as you can see, um, our 2023 budget here and our proposed 2024 budget and our 2022 actuals you'll see a decline between 22 and 23, and we do anticipate to be underneath that budget projection for 2023 as well with our actuals, um, and that is due to that contract change. And that current contract does have the CPI of um, the minimum of the 2.5 to the maximum of 3%. So um, we have factored that in with our proposed budget for 24 and 25. These are our post-closure reserve expenditures. These are strictly set aside just for that closed landfill. Um, and historically, we have always come in under budget for those expenses as well. So that adds to our bottom fund balance at the end of our um, budget for the year. Capital projects, you'll see, and we, we're gonna probably talk about this a lot um, frequently, um, is that increase in those, those capital projects um, we are very much getting into that peak season of, of having those expenditures. Any questions on the expenditures portion? Does any of this include, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that the South County Transfer Station is not part of this schedule? That it's going to be, um, we include that with our capital projects as the projection, but with that South County transfer station, we are going to go with one or the other. So we either are going to renovate 
Rainier or Rochester, or we're going to do the South County. Um, we put that in the plan to anticipate having both in the budget, but we're only going to go with one. So the bottom line is we'll have that savings once we make that decision. I'm, I'm just imagining that it's beyond 2025 when that would actually be the expenditures for that. Correct. Yeah. And we do actually, um, actually, I'm sorry, that we'll see it on slide eight, but we do have the South County Transfer Station penciled in in 24 and 25. So I think right there we can all understand that maybe our timing on this isn't quite right. Um, so it is included in those numbers that you're seeing for 24 and 25. Um, though I would suggest that when we finally look at the um, total cost for that, it's going to be a lot more significant than maybe what we have planned on our CIP program right now. So this is just going to take our current budget for 2023 and break it apart for our expenditure type. So we have our professional services, which include our contracted services. We have our inner funds. That includes um, that a direct appropriation for public health and uh, our program with the MRC with WSU. You'll see our indirect expenses. That's for like our IT support, financial services. And we have our payroll. Uh, miscellaneous supplies and equipment, utilities, our taxes, and then obviously our construction of capital assets as well. Any questions on this slide before we move on? So here is a better breakdown of that contractor professional service consultant operational area. Um, so what we did is we took that portion of our expenditures and really kind of broke it down so we can see where those expenses are coming from, which area. Um, the biggest percentage is going to be obviously our transfer station operations. So under the new contract, you'll notice a lot of changes in the budget. So currently, our drop box recycling and work recycling are now included into that transfer station operations. We also now under the contract pay for actual tonnage coming out of Rainier and Rochester and those are billed separately within um, as opposed to the prior contract we had. So you'll see a significant increase in that budget um, from prior years to now because we had to go back through and realign that budget to um, reflect those changes. So this is my opportunity to just again note that second line for yard waste. Um, our costs are about two and a half to you know two and a half million to process the yard waste that we receive. And you might recall we were receiving about 1.4 million in revenue. So um, again, that's being subsidized by by tipping fees, which again can be a legitimate choice, but it's some, certainly something we will be looking at during the rate study. Um, the other thing is I just want to um, give hats off. We keep talking about the impacts of the new contract. Um, that was a lot of work by a lot of people, including um, some key SWAC members. And you know, you can really see that uh, our costs were reduced in 2023 under that new contract, um, even when you take into consideration inflation and our growth um, projections. So just a, you can see that probably most uh, uh, obviously on this particular slide. Do we have any questions on this slide? Okay, we're going right along then. So this is, again, what Karen kind of touched base on is that plan for capital improvement. So each year, this is reevaluated. And it shows basically a breakdown of our project, the amount, and I will say very tentative year <laughs> on when we anticipate. Um, you will not see the SCADA or Blair on here um, because they do wrap up this year. Um, pumps is due to wrap up next year as well, along with the security technology improvements for all three of our locations. 
You will also see that second location for the transfer station facility in here and those improvements to Rainier and Rochester. Again, we will be only moving forward with one of those. Um, for knitting timing, um, we're going to evaluate our cash flow needs in that decision as well. And we also have our RFP going out for our compact replacement in late November. Um, we are anticipating not having these site differential sediment repairs um, due to the wharf reconfiguration. So again, this is kind of like everything's out there, but there will be projected changes to these capital projects based on decisions that will be made in the future. This is also a good place that you can see those general facilities, renovations, and upgrades, um, the $100,000 each year. This gets to, I believe it was your question, Richard, about that contingency for some sort of emergency response or repairs. That's where we, in addition to what we have in the maintenance and operation for just regular, um, you know, sort of anticipated repairs, this would be available to us to respond in an emergency to something that needs to be taken care of out there. Um, and again, to Shanna's point, when we look at the total cost for the worksite reconfiguration of 12.5 million, that's a very, very early preliminary estimate. I think that we may see that that is revised over time as the plan takes shape. And I think the same thing with the transfer station um, second facility uh, in South County at a six, six and a half million dollar number. That will certainly um, most definitely be revised as we have more information about what that might look like. So that will be all part of our consideration as we plan these projects. Any questions around capital facilities? Yeah, uh, if not, I uh, sort of have a question and I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time to bring it up or not, but I've been thinking a lot about that compactor. And uh, I work in an equipment heavy industry and just thinking about uh, the ability to sort of mothball equipment to use for parts and as redundancy backups and that sort of thing. And just really wondering if our old compactor is gonna be sufficient as we look to the future or if we really should be right now thinking about two compactors with maybe that third one not being um, uh, capable of serving in that redundancy capacity in the future. Just kind of thinking about that, because I know um, I quite often plan to use old equipment and, and it never seems to work out. Jeff, that probably is best addressed by you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good good point. Um, I'm feeling, well, again, we'll, we'll see as they pull this thing out um, and mothball, this, this, we'll get a better feel for, you know, its potential uh, remaining life. The good mm -hmm. news part of it is that when it goes back in, it'll be the light receiving just the light duty and not the, you know, it's the backup. Right. Uh, um, so it's, right now it's, of course, getting all the duty. And of course, when with the replacement, the new one will be getting all the duty, you know, all the work. Right. Uh, it's really just, you know, I think with the reduced level of number of cycles will be put in the mileage, literally mileage on these things. Um, as the backup, I think we could probably get quite a few years out of it. That's it, my perception at this point, unless we find out different, um, you know, when we pull it out, because we'll actually have a number of years between it coming out and, uh, you know, and then having to go back, you know, whenever we put it back in. So, because it's, uh, that the uh, thought will be this coming year to get the new compactor in and it will be uh, several years before we would be ready and in, 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 in the construction mode on the work reconfiguration so which makes me think even more we probably should have a contingency plan in place i'm concerned about that sure understood yeah uh richard uh yeah just wondering if there's any market for a used compactor uh since we're going to have a big delay, it sounds like the mothball period is kind of long. Would it be better to sell it and uh, and then buy new when we're ready to do an installation? Well, so it's definitely something to, to look at and consider. As far as markets for that, um, probably minimal. It's you know it's a large you know 
expensive piece has a lot of wear on it, you know, a fair amount of wear on it. I'm not sure what we could, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm doubtful, but it, it's not still, like, it's a good point, something we could look at. Thanks for that question, Richard. Anyone else before we move off of capital facilities? All right, we'll move on into our last slide here. So this is a overall snapshot of our financial plan from 23 through 29. Um, it's basically gonna show our projections for 24 through 29. Um, we are, you know, getting to that new budget year for 24 and 25. Um, please keep in mind, this is currently based on our current standing. So this does not have any impact on um, any decisions that are made within the capital projects. So we've talked about lots of different capital projects and different avenues that we could possibly take. Those are going to have impacts on the bottom line as well. Um, this snapshot is taking in all of those considerations at once. It also doesn't include that great study that we're anticipating. Um, so that is going to play a, could play a factor in the overall picture as well. Um, something that I mentioned before, again, that post closure expenditures, we always have that budget out there, but we always come in underneath that. So that's just another dollar amount that gets added to that in the income balance of the very Any questions for the overall presentation, the last slide, anything you'd like us to follow up on? Any questions, comments, or requests from Shanna and Karen? I'm not seeing any hands. Anything in the room? I just have to say, Karen, I've been watching a lot of hockey lately, and you need to step up your color commentary game. <laughs> But fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm just messing with you. Uh, thanks to both of you. That was a great presentation. Really appreciate it, Shanna. You're welcome. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. And if there are no other questions or comments, we will move on to our 2024 work plan. Do you want to walk us through that, Amanda? Sure, I can do that. And I will uh, go ahead and share it on the screen. So over the past uh, several years, we've started using a work plan for SWAC. So we kind of know what things to anticipate on the agendas and it's uh, turned into sort of a template. Um, so you'll see some repeating things from past years. We plan to do legislative uh, session updates, presentations, um, as well as capital facility project updates throughout the year. Uh, we plan to have a couple presentations from our education outreach staff. Um, and then let's see, we also have um, an election coming up for the chair and vice chair in February. So those are a few highlights on the agenda. Um, later in the year, it's more of the same sort of things. Uh, another budget presentation for November next year. Um, and of course, our bigger projects that we discussed, especially through um, last the last presentation, things like the work reconfiguration, South County Transfer Station, those you'll see show up on agendas as, um, as updates become available. But also important, um, it's important that we get your input and find out if there are topics that you'd like to see on next year's agendas. So if you'd like to, um, pitch some ideas, we can add that to the agenda. And whatever we put on this agenda is not set in stone. Things can move around, we can add things, um, and we'll be taking ideas at the next meeting as well. Uh, I would hope at the appropriate time we could add that rate study. That's Yes, of yeah. course. And uh, Richard, you had some suggestions last month and I see you have your hand raised now. Uh, regarding that, I'm um, glad to see climate mitigation on the May. Yes. The, and I'm just wondering if we can get a presentation, uh, perhaps from ecology, or I'm not sure where it is best located, but I'm interested in a sort of a 10 year uh, weather outlook projection uh, with the latest climate data 
to see if there are if if we should anticipate impacts that will affect operations uh, over you know the next you know certainly five but maybe looking out as far as ten years. Great, I will add that to our list. Any other thoughts, comments? Anyone on the Zoom call want to add something now for consideration? I'm not seeing any hands. You're also welcome to send me uh, emails or a phone call. You can send me anything you think of later. Thank you for that. Yeah. I'll give it one more shot. Any other comments, thoughts? for our agenda for next year. Jeff. Um, yeah, so I just want to, um, uh, it will actually be on the agenda. So there will be a, a more or less, a, I can't remember if it's at the January or February meeting, an adoption by you of this work plan. So right now we're just, we're putting out the draft for you to consider. Ultimately, we would have a, a, a revised version based upon any input that we receive today or at the next meeting. Um, that we, I think, if I recall last year, we did it after the election of officers. Uh, last year. That is correct. Right. Yeah, so it would be yeah. on the February agenda. So, we, it, you know, we will have more opportunity to add to this. Um, additionally, um, when we got, I'm going to talk about another issue related to about the December meeting or not, but. Um, the, for example, the waste energy presentation that was supposed to be today that uh, he was unable to make will probably show up early, you know, next year. Um, if that happens, so you know, we weren't didn't have it on there. It may actually end up being on the January meeting. So I'm just, you know, we will move that one forward because he has a presentation ready. He just was unable to make it today. So. Got it. Got it. Thank you for that. Um, Ed, did you have your hand up? I'm thinking this might be a little premature, but I would like to add to the work plan agenda for next year. Um, there, there's there's a few people I got to talk to first, but I'm um, thinking someone from the Washington Policy Center would like to chime in on uh, our uh, continued work plan with the SWAC. Uh, but I need to follow up with that before I, you know, officially submit a request. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Just let yeah, me know. Thank you for that. That would be an interesting point of view to bring into this uh, conversation. Thanks for that, Ed. Any other comments or thoughts before we move on? I just really appreciate the legislative uh, presentations we get. Me too. I mean, yeah, they're really they're good. informative, and, and uh, you know, it's really important for us to view work and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Thank you for that. Uh, we will be electing new officers in February, so. Um, I would encourage all of you to be thinking about uh, whether or not you would like to serve. Staff makes this a really uh, uh, easy lift. Um, so be thinking about that. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at David and Greg um, <laughs> because you, you've both been on the committee for a while now. And um, so I'm just looking at you. <laughs> um, and if that's it, then Jeff, I think we're ready to take a look at our new member application from Aaron. Certainly. Okay. So as you know, um, Delroy retired officially from most everything uh, <laughs> after being 30 plus years on this, on this committee. Um, so we did have the, the solid waste um, industry representative position open. A couple months ago, I remember, if you recall, I actually, you know, after I retired, I put it out there for anybody in industry in that industry to, they're interested to apply. And we have to date received just a single application. Um, from Aaron Robertson um, from LeMay Pacifica Pacific Disposal. And before we, you know, since it's just, anyway, before we make a recommendation now to the uh, Florida County Commissioners on seating uh, Aaron on, uh, as the solid waste uh, representative, we want to get a recommendation from this group on a, a, whether to move that forward. So. And so this would be basically would you know I'm looking for a motion yay yay nay anyway so that's what I'm looking for so we sent out the application for you all to have ahead of time to, to review so it is open for discussion. So have you all had a chance to take a look at Aaron's application? 
And I thought I saw her on this call. Is she with us? Yeah. yeah. Upper left. Corner. I okay. am. Uh, oh, yeah. sorry. No, um, you're fine. Uh, Aaron, did you want to say a few words? Well, I'm excited for the opportunity. I've been in the waste industry quite a few years now and that uh, I've worked with a lot of people in the room and on the call uh, throughout those many years. And uh, I think this is a great next step to help assist the county and uh, moving forward. And I'm, I've been in the area my entire life. I uh, absolutely love Thurston County and the surrounding areas. And uh, I think that we can all um, glean a lot of information from one another. And I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, thanks, Aaron, and thanks for stepping up uh, to this opportunity. And um, it was hard to say goodbye to Delroy. As uh, as we all know, he served on this committee for so long, and we look forward to having um, that industry voice at the table again. So thank you for stepping up to this challenge. Um, at this point, I would entertain a motion to make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners to add Aaron to our SWAC membership. I would move to accept him. Thank you, Elaine. And is there a second? I'll second. I, I initiated, uh, did you hear me? I'm sorry? I, I initiated, I, I made that initial motion. Oh, okay. Um, did you, did my, I my think we had, I think we had a couple of folks making a motion. And then we okay, had a I'll couple of folks. It. How about that? Uh, okay, thank you, Ed. <laughs> okay, no worries. Thanks. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, Aaron, uh, we will move your name forward to the Board of County Commissioners. Thank, thank you. you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to it too. Thanks. And Jeff, your manager's report. Certainly. Well, you know, prior to getting into some of the updates, um, I want to have a little, a little brief discussion about the December meeting or like meeting or lack thereof. I know uh, we have had a couple of years where we haven't met in December. I know last, last year we did meet with a limited topic. It was just, it was more of a presentation specifically for December. So what I'd like to put out here is uh, the level of interest of having a December meeting or not having a December meeting and before we make a decision on whether to do that. So that is out for discussion for you, for y'all. Any thoughts on December? Back. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's great to see all your faces, uh, but you know, tis the season. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess I'm indifferent. I, I wouldn't be opposed to uh, not having one or having one. I, I'll be a team player. Uh, Jeff, do we need to have one as far as the workload is concerned? Uh, not, not particularly. Um, you know, we could potentially have a presentation, but we, there wasn't really anything hot on the the press, you know, you know pressing at this point in time. Um, and we looked, we'll have a pretty, you know, generally speaking, we met every other month this year. I mean, previously we had had a summer uh, recess where we had one month where we would be off, like in July. This this year we met in all of those. Um, so I guess give you a one month break potentially, but again, we have no pressing issues uh, coming up for December. Uh, just speaking personally, December work-wise tends to be a very busy month for me. I wouldn't mind having the month off. I would, I agree. Yep. Yeah. To uh, uh, decide on a, a skipping December for a meeting or? How about a motion and a second and a vote? <laughs> okay, uh, I would entertain yeah, a motion to um, to not meet during the month of December of 2023. So moved. Thank okay. you, Ed. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second from was that Joan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. All those in favor of not meeting in the month of December, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. <laughs> Hearing none, we will not be meeting in the month of December, and I would like to note that we have been joined by Commissioner Mejia. 
All right, well, thank you for that. So we will plan accordingly. Thank you. All right, so for the rest of the manager's uh, update, um, so the, let's start with the, the SWAC, the membership ordinance update, as you recall, we talked about it in January uh, last year initially about because of with the addition of the two new commissioner districts, uh, how it didn't quite jive with our the, the way our ordinance was um, because it would the additional numbers that we would have been required to add uh, didn't uh, go with what uh, the county's ordinance was. So we discussed it in January. If you recall, that we brought forth several options at the July meeting. At the August meeting, you, you all made a rec basically passed a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, this is for so to, to refresh your memory to maintain that 15 members total to not increase, to add the agricultural representative officially into our into our ordinance, even though we've we've had a, a, a member but it wasn't there as far as the county's ordinance, um, and to reduce the the citizen representatives from the three one from each commissioner, current commissioner district, that, and reduce that from three to two, making those positions now at large, just as long as those two do not reside in the same district. So they have to be from separate districts. So we had a briefing with the board in August, uh, of course, which Renee was um, uh, participated in as well. And then uh, we set a public hearing and the public hearing was yesterday afternoon, um, again, uh, Renee and I were there and presented the board. Uh, nobody, nobody spoke except for uh, your chair. <laughs> as far as from the public, and that was four. With no, we never received no public feedback at the public hearing. As far as against the sum, and uh, the board actually uh, ultimately approved that ordinance. So we are officially now again a fifteen members, and we are a debt member uh, committee with just two residences. Uh, we have two. Current resident uh, members uh, that'd be Richard and Renee. So, and Greg is here officially uh, again as our agricultural rep. So, um, that still leaves us just for uh, sake of order with two vacant positions. One of which we were making recommendations from the solid waste industry, um, but the Aaron is only moving forward with that. So that will basically leave our only vacant position being somebody from the city of Rainier. So um, almost up to full steam there. So, so that's 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 done. We've, we've, we've completed that. So hooray! Good job to, to all of you for for moving that forward and providing your feedback and and getting that uh, getting that completed. And before the beginning of the year and before the election, it's even better, right? Before we have new, uh, there's two new commissioner uh, commissioners added. Uh, the other item, next item I want to mention is uh, used cooking oil. So we've had an issue beginning on October 1st. Um, we, so back up. we take used cooking oil at Hasso House. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, customers will bring that in and it's, you know, the, and it's collected by, it was collected by a company. I forgot the name of the company off the top of my head right now, but the, basically it's taken and it's converted into biodiesel is what the used cooking oil is, is, is they do with it. So. But that company um, late in September notified us that they are no longer going to pick that up from us because they couldn't guarantee the sources of that oil, of the cooking oil. They still continue to serve uh, businesses such as restaurants, um, you know, um, institutional kitchens and other places like that that generate large quantities because they can go there and they know specifically you know, where it's coming from. But what they... Uh, have decided they don't want to do is places like us where you have all kinds of different people bringing their cooking oil and but with the potential for contamination from anybody uh, that they were not going to service us anymore so we beginning october 1st we have suspended accepting that at the has a house um, we are currently looking i think we might have, might have a line on one company that might possibly be able to to work with us but um for the time being that program is suspended um and we are looking to hopefully find a vendor that will uh, accept our material and um, and uh, can be let us start it back up. So in the meantime, when folks call us with that, uh, you know, with that question about the cooking oils, we are similarly what we used to do with paint. 
as we are recommended, they solidify the, the, the oil and then put it, throw it away in their waste, which is, again, not our preferred option, but it's what we have at this point in time. Um, so uh, anyway, it was, I'll, we will update you if, if any changes, but that's where we're at right now. I just want you to be aware of a, a change in the program. Any questions? Was that a result of contamination at our tank, or is this just a theoretical I, even seen elsewhere, or what? As far as I know, it's not. It has nothing to do with us. But my guess is that it was probably from some of the location that they were getting it from. But that, if it had to, it would have had to have been my guess contamination somewhere that made them gun shy. I know, um, for example, with used motor oil, you know, now now they tested it ahead of time, you know, make sure there's no PCBs in it because they know that. I think that's just kind of the same situation where all it takes is one person putting the wrong uh, material in it and contaminate a whole load. So, but as far as I, we have not heard anything that is that was pertaining specifically to us. Um, and as far as our customers, we get them from you know, homeowners, but really uh, we do get um, food trucks are some of the ones that, that tend to show up for us because they're mobile. Um, you know, so they, they, they don't, have a, a set location where they can be serviced. Um, so those tend to be one of the, the types of customers that we tend to get that come in with the cooking oil, even though we do have a, a volume limit per, per day. Um, but that is they're kind of the typical uh, user of that program for us, so up to date. So again, we're, we're hoping to come up with something, but at this point, we just, we just don't have anything yet. So uh, again, we have high hopes, but that's where we're at. Um, we have, it was, I think Shanna mentioned it. We have actually several uh, requests for proposals that are in the, that we'll be putting out for different works. Um, some are a little further along than others, right? First is right now, with, it's actually out and it won't close for another week or so, is we are um, looking for proposals for moderate risk waste hauling. So basically getting uh, quotes from a company that to haul the materials collected at Hazo House um, and basically the hauling and, and disposal recycling or, or whatever of it, but the, the final finding the final disposition for the materials that are collected at Hazel House. So I believe the proposals are due on November 9th, if I recall correctly. Um, and we're hoping to get the get some updated and better pricing on what we're paying to, for the for those uh, services. So that's out there right now. Uh, we also have a. We'll, we'll, We'll be putting out shortly, hopefully within the next week or so, uh, a request for proposals for, re uh, for the recycling of oil of the used motor oil, um, recycling of the used oil filters, as well as recycling of antifreeze that are all collected at Hazel House at the the separate piece uh, than the other materials, and they're all going into the recycling stream. So uh, we're looking for pricing and and um, proposals from those companies. That'll be like I said, that hopefully will be going out. Uh, for RFP in the next week or week, week and a half. And then third, as, as also mentioned, is we have a request for proposals we put together that we'll be looking to get out within hopefully the next month or so. And that's for the new compactor uh, that was mentioned previously. So um, that's got a bunch of things uh, in the works as far as uh, getting uh, proposals and quotes on going out there in the out there in the community right now. And I think. That is it. We're we're a little ahead of time this this month because we had a half hour plan for our waste energy presentation that had been requested, and since he backed out, so um, we may actually. Oh, Richard. Richard, yeah. Sorry, I I uh, just going back to the uh, the waste cooking oil issue mm -hmm. briefly. What's the volume that you were typically seeing on that? on a monthly basis. I would I could get back to you on that, but I I don't have that number up I mean, the, it's pretty hard for the lunch trucks and things like that to solidify and and you know, bring it in that way. And so I'm just thinking maybe there's a way to at least address that issue and, and if the volume is large enough uh, maybe we put a high priority on trying to find another vendor. The QC on on cooking oil is is really pretty easy. Uh, you just have to QC all of your individual collections, and I wouldn't put that on us. I'd put that on the vendor who collects from us. Um, they ought to be able to do that and to guarantee that they have cooking oil. 
uh, as long as you know we have a you know reasonable constraints on on us so that we're not uh, somehow getting Aracor or some other substance mixed in uh, from someone who wants to hide uh, hazardous waste in, in the cooking oil stream. So, but I mean, lunch trucks are, I think, I mean, it seemed to me to be pretty benign. And, and so that's why I just raised the issue. If, if, the, if the volumes are large enough, we should ought to be, ought to be able to find some other vendor who can handle it. Hoping so, absolutely. Yeah, good. Any other questions or comments for Jeff? I'm not seeing any hands. Uh, for the first time in a very long time, we actually have a little time uh, uh, to uh, have members share things that are going on in your communities or that you're aware of that would be of benefit to this group. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share? I have one, I have one thing. Yeah, great. Um, so I also am on the Thurston County uh, Agriculture Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a discussion at the last meeting that um, what's becoming a little bit of a problem in waste in ag is um, slaughter, uh, uh, old wolf, you know, leftovers um, from slaughter and on farm slaughtering and so forth. Um, and so that's something just to, I wanted to mention as I said I would, but also, um, you know, as, as there's more and more interest for local food source and, um, you know, local local meat products mm -hmm. and so forth, um, there's also a discussion about, you know, having a, a dedicated slaughter plant in the county. Um, and so recycling of that, composting, you know, right now it's being disposed of or sometimes composted on site. It's problematic for a lot of people doing it. Um, it's just something to think about for a solution, you know, um, as that as that volume of oil will kind of grow in the county um, and we're doing more on farm slaughter, um, it's going to become a larger problem and something that might need to be dealt with in another way. Right now, a lot of food is being disposed to. I actually think that would be a really interesting presentation um, mm -hmm. next year uh -huh. um, because I think you're right uh, with more emphasis on local um, a farm to table sorts of uh, efforts. Yeah, I'm sure that issue is is growing. It's a tricky feedstock for composting. Yeah, uh, it's not you know composting for the light of heart. Um, you know, yeah. so like the it's not a real easy on you know on yeah. farm yeah product to, to compost. Um, commercially, it poses some issues because uh, from from a ready perspective, uh, most facilities aren't permitted to take that, and it's in the big picture um, a very small volume for a commercial facility. So. Um, there's something, you know, composting is a great practice for it. Um, there's just not a solution out there right now for it. Uh, Thank you for bringing that up. The things I never think about. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, that's an important one. And, you know, I'm in that world and, um, and I didn't really think about it as a problem yeah. when we brought it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a growing, growing issue. Yeah. Growing area, so. yeah. Thanks for that. Anything else? Um, I guess I could say I, I attended the. Uh, Moderate waste technical session uh, that Swan put on oh, October twenty yeah. sixth, and I was one of the presenters there. The wild horse uh, wind farm in Pitatas County, and they had, they were sold out. It's like now oh, twenty five or thirty people go out to fit in there, and so that was fun. And uh, I was doing with my time. Nice. Anything interesting come out of that for you? Um. I guess one one thing is, um, and this may be something that uh, you know staff may want to look into is um, there's some uh, questions about uh, accepting, managing, and transporting marine flares. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we accept that at the Hazel House, but um, there's some issues around explosive uh, management with it, alcohol, tobacco, firearms agency and stuff I've done some research on. So, you know, if we take it there, I'd be happy to uh, have a little powwow with uh, Hassel House and Jeff and other folks, if that's something we, I don't know if we take those at our facility or not. And Jeff, do we take any we sort of not. incendiary <laughs> devices? Or? We do not. Because, yeah, okay. Typically we try to, you know, people have ammunition or other explosives and typically try to aim at the like state police or. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? 
that anyone would like to share? If not, we're going to give you back 30 minutes today. I have a question. Oh, Joan. Yeah, Joan. Um, I've been asked a couple times, and I don't know the answer to, is Hazel House the only place where people in Thurston County can take uh, paint? Oh, certainly not. Not no. I mean, so late paint is. I mean, we're we're probably the heaviest uh, recipient, but there's four or five other locations around the county as as well. And then typically it's in paint stores. And we, I know we have a handout uh, of that 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 lists where those others are because we do have we do have a limit on the quantity anybody can bring on a particular day just to keep contractors from uh, abusing that practice, for example. Okay, you thank you. Thank your website, you can see the location. Yeah. Thank you. Th thanks, Joan. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions, thoughts from anybody? If not, Aaron, we look forward to having you join us officially. And uh, we're not going to meet next month. So uh, we will see each other in January. And this meeting of the Solid Waste Advisory Committee is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Holidays, everybody. Thank you. Yeah.